Welcome to the new video of MRCS for beginners. Today we'll discuss about the part two Fosia sheet. Let's get started. So the first question: A twenty-six year old man motorcyclist loses one liter of blood, secondary to an open fracture, femur sustained in a road traffic accident. Which of the following is the most likely earliest compensatory response in hypovolemia in this patient? So. There are two many compensatory mechanisms in our body. One is through the battery receptor, which is the earliest, and the answer is the two. Answer is the battery receptor here. The other one is the renin angiotensin mechanism systems, which takes days to compensate. But hit here, the earliest compensatory mechanism has been asked. So the answer is battery receptor induced vasoconstriction. Number two, history of a discrete palpable lump at the breast of a 34 year old woman has shown and the histology shows apocrine metaplasia epithelial overgrowth and papillary projections i mean papillary means finger like projections what is the most likely pathological process it is a metaplasia that means it is a reversible process and simple epithelial overgrowth so the answer is benign breast ceased number three a 35 year old woman presents with a recurrent peptic ulcer recurrent peptic ulcer she is on proton pump inhibitor previously received helicobacter pyloric eradications therapy three months ago which of the following is likely to be raised on venous blood testing the answer is the gastrin level number four a three-year-old male boy presented with his mother for rectal blood loss. His mother describes it as a bright red color in the toilet pan. He has no pain on defecation with a negative family history. What is the most likely cause? So three years old boy, rectal blood loss with his fresh blood. The answer is juvenile polyp. Most important thing here is negative family history. Number five, a 32 year old man presented with a painful torticollis. There is no past medical history and his only complaints that he has been feeling rather tired over the last four nights. On examination, he has a large rubbery masses in the lateral aspect of his neck as well as a few smaller masses along his internal jugular vein. You correctly assume that the muscular neck spasm and the large mass is connected. The most likely cause of torticolis is, is due to what pressure? The neck muscle sternocleidomastoid is responsible for the torticolis. Spasm of this sternocleidomastoid causes the uh, torticolis syndromes and this muscle is supplied by the spinal accessories nerve. So the answer is the pressure on the spinal accessory nerve causes the torticulis symptom of these patients. Number six, a teen menopausal, 52-year-old woman is diagnosed with a breast cancer. Her menarche was at the age of 14. She had her first child at the age of 40. During lactation, she developed a breast abscess that necessitate surgical intervention she has no family history of breast cancer which is the following is the most significant risk factor for these patients the answer is as the patient had her first child at the age of 40 years so this is the risk factor for this patient to develop carcinoma age at the first full-term pregnancy the others all are risk of developing breast cancer like family prediction but the, she has no family history. History of breast abscess. This is not and not and very primarily risk factor for developing carcinoma. Interval between menarche and menopause. Yes, it is very important for in general developing a breast carcinoma. But the patient has menarche as early age of 14 and menarche by the year of 52, which is quite normal and physical stature. So, the mainly answer is age of the first full-term pregnancy. Number seven, a 30-year-old 
Women is sent to the outpatient clinic with a weight loss of 5 kg over the last 6 months. She also complains of anxiety, panic attacks and palpations. On examination, there is swelling on the anterior neck with moves on swallowing. So that is the thyroid mass because of the attachment of the pretracheal fascia, fascia, it moves with deglutitions or swallowing. So which of the following is the most likely pathological developing underlying this presentation? So is neck swelling, I mean thyroid mass and the patient symptoms is anxiety, panic attack, palpitation. So it's very and weight loss history very important so it is much likely to be primary hyperthyroidism or the Graves disease number eight a 69 year old man has been admitted to the high dependency unit following an anterior resections under general anesthesia she was given two milligram of intrathecal morphine on examination he looks pale drowsy arterial blood clash result we will discuss about this later but upon on the scenario just just think about what could be the done patient have give intrathecal morphine so more the one of the main side effect of the morphine is respiratory suppressions so patient may have due to patient may have bready uh bradypnea so if there is less bradypnea less carbon dioxide is moving out from the body i mean the carbon dioxide is re will retained so the most probably cause could be could be respiratory acidosis this could be but let's see the what the scenario or the chart is giving so first finding is ph is 7.28 that's mean it is an acidosis that's okay now, what is the partial carbon dioxide level? It is higher than the normal, like 6, 8.1. And what is the oxygen level? Okay, within the normal limit. Now, see about the lactate or bicarbonate is. So, glucose is fine. Okay. Uh, sorry, it's, uh, it's not okay. It's very high. It's very hyperglycemic. Lactate okay, is high lactate. Base excess. Okay, within the normal limit, we can found. So the answer is acidosis respiratory. So respiratory acidosis. Number nine, a 32 year old woman has a pigmented lesion excised from her left calf. The histopathological diagnosis is melanoma in situ, which is completely excised with a one centimeter margin. What is the next most appropriate management? So in case of in situ melanoma, one centimeter margin excision is quite enough. So now we have to educate the patients about any uh, discharge from, from the follow-up. So or any reappearing, so any change of the skin appearance. So this is the number one answer, education about skin self-examination and discharge or any of discharge from follow-up. Number 10, a 60-year-old man with a past history of angina undergoes a uncomplicated operation for an inguinal hernia. Postoperatively, he is found to be hypotensive, tachycardic, and has a raised jugular venous pressure. What is the most likely underlying case of his hypotensions? So the patient has an operation. The first things come, okay, maybe patient maybe have a blood loss. But look at this question. In the exam, in the operative note, it says uncomplicated operation. So there is minimal blood loss. And usually, unial hernia is kind of almost bloodless uh, operation, kind of. Okay. And postoperative is found hypotensive, tachycardic, okay, raised jugular pressure. That means his preload is fine. His preload is when if the patient is has a blood loss, the preload or the total blood volume will be less and the JVP will be down or the JVP you can find collapsed. So I mean no blood, but it says raised. So the fluid is not an issue here. The issue here could be due to the underlying anesthetic drugs, patient may have a decreased sympathetic output of the cardiac i mean the cardiac muscle itself maybe could not uh, contract harder at it as it needed so that is the answer is reduced stroke volume 
number 11. A four-year-old boy presents to the emergency department with a two-day history of fever, difficulty walking, and unable to wet bear, unable to wet bear on his right leg. He has been on oral amoxicillin 25 mg three times a day for chest infections over the last five days. He is irritable with a temperature of 39, so temperature is high. He does not allow examination, does not, this is very important, so very much painful, does not allow examination and keeps his right hip flexed position. That means he is so much on pain and elected. Blood tested are high WBC, high WBC, high CPR, and almost low hemoglobin, marginal hemoglobin. What is the most likely diagnosis? Four years old, right hip flexed position, in abducted position, could not allow you some examination, high temperature, and all the sepsis feature. So it is most likely septic arthritis number 12 a 34 year old man is admitted to the emergency department with a head injury on examination his gcs is 9 a ct scan of the brain demonstrate an extra dural hemorrhage what is the falling arteries is most likely the source the extra dural hemorrhage or epidural hemorrhage you will find something the blood will be like this and it is most commonly on the medial meningeal artery medial meningeal artery a 65 okay so what is the branch from where the medial meningeal artery comes from the maxillary artery which is a branch of external carotid artery okay number 13 a 65-year-old man has a history of transit ischemic attack. He is due to undergo carotid artery end endorectomy, end arterectomy, which one of the following is true of the internal carotid artery. The first one begins at the level of the six cervical vertebra. Actually, it's come from the C4 divides into anterior, middle, and posterior cerebral arteries. The anterior and middle comes from the internal, uh, uh, but the posterior cerebral is comes from the vertebral artery. Keeps of the ophthalmic artery. Yes, this is the answer. And what is the D? It is accompanied within the skull by preganglionic sympathetic fiber. No, it's the postganglionic sympathetic fiber. Passes through the foramina ovally. No, it is uh, foramina lacerum actually. It's from the foramina lacerum from the internal base of the skull. Foramina lacerum. And from the outside, there is a foramen, foramen for the internal carotid artery. So a 25-year-old male athlete is training at rest. How many liters of blood Per minute, does it heart pumps out? It is usually five to six liter of blood pumped out from the blood pumped out from the heart each minute. The answer is five to six. A twenty-six year old man present with the emergency department after sustaining a glass cut to his arm. On examination, there is a ten centimeter longitudinal lacerations on the anterior respect of the upper arm. And to respect of the upper one, most probably is elbow, over the elbow joint, suspected. He has a symptom suggestive of ulnar nerve injury. On exploring the upper part of the arm, we would expect the ulnar nerve to be where? So on the ulna, on the over the cubital fossa, we knew the from the lateral to medial, thus first the medial nerve then the biceps tendon and then the artery and lastly the ulnar nerve ulnar nerve this is the artery and the biceps tendon so see read all the answer the answer is a c medial to the brachial artery 
Number 16. A 55 year old man presents with acute back pain following a severe road traffic accident. Neurogel examination reveals lack of sensation of the umbilicus. What is the spinal value of the umbilicus? Very straightforward question. T10. 17. A 65 year old man complains of being thirsty and getting up in the middle of the night to get to the toilet. Okay. His weight is 95.5 kg, weight is 1.65, and his blood pressure 167 by 94 millimeter. Oral glucose tolerance tests were performed and produced the following result. Fasting is 5.9. Okay, it was supposed to be less than 6.1, or if more than 7, it is diabetes mellitus. So it is kind of within normal limit. Two hours after is over 11.1 so that is a clear cut demarcation patient has the diabetes mellitus now if i told you the answer what would be the normal the normal of fasting is less than 6.1 and after two hours is 7.8 but if the fasting is more than 7.8 or the two hours more than 11.1 it is indicated as patient has diabetes mellitus now 18 a nine-year-old child with cellulitis of the hand which chronological sequence immunological produce production is correct in any immunological procedure I, we know there's game there is five uh, IGM is called the game G a M E D. The first thing they produced is I G M letter I G G. So first come I G G will be the first thing to appear on the blood production. So that is I G M precedes the I G G productions. Nineteen. A sixty-year-old man presents to the emergency department with epistaxis. The source of bleeding is identical as Little's area and results with direct cautery, which vessel is most likely to be responsible for this bleeding. That most commonly is a sphenopalatine artery. The nose bleeding, epistaxis bleeding. Why is the sphenopalatine? This is the sphenopalatine artery. Number D is the answer. 20. A 75-year-old man presents with esophageal reflux. Endoscopy confirms the presence of hyatosania. The esophagus passes through the diaphragm. At which level? I already told you via or voa. So 8, 10, 12, voa. So esophagus is 10, T10. Now this is a trick to you know, final examination. Always read the last line because it clearly demands the esophagus passes through the diaphragm at which level. So all of the above information given above are irrespective to your decisions making. So it's very tricky to save time on the final exam. Read the last question first, the last line first, and if needed, read from the top. 21. A 78 year old woman with emphysema receiving 28% oxygen by mask has the following blood clash, blood gas analysis. So it's AVG is giving. Okay. First, what is the pH? 7.28. So that means it is acidosis. Now, the question is it is respiratory or metabolic? So see the respiratory. Check the respiratory partial carbon dioxide level. It is high. It is high, okay. And bicarbonate level, it is also high. So which one you will take first? The first, think about the bicarbonate level. Is it correspond with the pH? It is in acidosis, bicarbonate level supposed to be low. Bicarbonate level supposed to be low, but it is higher, okay. But in acidosis, bicarbonate, car partial carbonate level is supposed to be higher. It is higher. So it is a respiratory acidosis. It is respiratory acidosis. But now the question is bicarbonate level doesn't correspond with the pH level because the body is trying to compensate 
the respiratory acidosis so it is a compensated but does it compensate fully no it is not compensated fully if it is compensated fully the ph would be between 7.35 or 7.45 so it is partially compensated metabolic acidosis partially compensated respiratory acidosis okay number 22 a 26 year old man is having a stereostatic frame fitted to his skull prior to radio surgery on a cerebral av malformations four pins secure the frame tightly through the skull to the outer table of the skull two anteriorly two posteriorly on insertion one of the posterior pins arterial hemorrhages is encountered one of the posterior pins causes the bleeding so watch which artery is most likely to have been punctured on the posterior it is supposed to be the occipital artery the occipital artery is maybe posterior cerebral artery it is intracranial so most appropriate answer is the same occipital artery 23 a 26 year old man presents with a two months history of unilateral testicular swelling an ultrasound shows a heterogeneous mass within the testes with a surrounding fluid blood show revealed elevated beta fetoprotein alpha fetoprotein sorry alpha fetoprotein which of the following is the most likely diagnosis so my two things will come to my head is seminoma and teratoma which is what the answer is here is the teratoma now explain how can we differentiate teratoma and seminoma usually usually teratoma the age limit is 20 to 35 in case of teratoma and the seminoma is over 35 years usually okay and this beta alpha alpha fetoprotein and the beta hcg level usually on the alpha fetoprotein you raised more raised in case of teratoma and in case of seminoma it is the beta hcg more raised okay okay number 24 a two-day-old baby presents with increasing respiratory distress he was born at full term by normal vaginal delivery on examination he has a cyanosis of the lower limb and marked respiratory in drawing of the chest his femoral pulse absent bilaterally and he has been an anuric for the last two hours pulse 140 blood pressure 60 30 millimeter in both upper limb what is the most likely diagnosis okay the the problem is in the upper limb patients has a low blood pressure but in the lower limb patient does not has a femoral pulse and the lower limb are cyanosed also the patient is anuric so the blood is not coming adequately to his kidney so this and patient is uh, in drawing chest the most common cause of this scenario is interrupted aortic arch that means the aortic arch is coming not from the left ventricle it's come from the right ventricle interrupted that is why pressure is very low because the contractions of left ventricle is much higher than the right sided so the answer is interrupted aortic arch 25 a 50 year old woman presents with a history of right upper quadrant pain and jaundice she reports that her urine was dark in color that her stools were offensive and difficult to flush so statoria or excessive oil on the stool fat digestions is not working properly that is the cause of offensive and difficult to flush which of the following explains the dark urine the patient supposed to be have an obstructive jaundice so patient supposed to have an obstructive jaundice dark color urine is caused by conjugated bilirubin so the patient has increased conjugated bilirubin it is raised both in hepatocellular obstructive hepatocellular and obstructive jaundice so 26 a 80 year old woman 
who has suffered a fall is found lying on the floor where she has been over 12 hours. The initial assessment shows that she has a core temperature of 28 degrees centigrade. So patient is suffering from hypothermia. What would expect an early physiological response to her body temperature to be? The body will try to increase blood pressure. And to increase the blood pressure is contractions of the peripheral artery, the vasoconstrictions. So that will increase the TPR, peripheral uh, resistance, and into the cardiac output ultimately will give the increased BP. The more blood goes to the periphery will increases the blood pressure. So answer is increased contractions of the peripheral blood vessels. Twenty-seven. A twelve-year-old boy presents to the emergency department two hours after helping his father cut the grass. He complains rhinorrhea, itchy eyes, sneezing, and a blocked nose. Okay. He is apyrexic with a hemoglobin 12.2, WBC 6.8, raised eosinophil count, so kind of allergic reactions. Chest X-ray is clear, which immunoglobin is most likely to cause this reaction. This kind of anaphylaxis, all allergic reaction, is caused by immunoglobin E. Number 28. A 45-year-old man presents with a backache and a leg pain due to prolapsed lumbar in the vertebral discs. The pain, which is aggregated by coughing and sneezing, radiates to the dorsum of the foot. On examination, there is weakness of the dorsiflexion of the foot, which nerve root is, is most likely to be involved. Okay, during, I have a small picture here. This is a knee jerk, that is by L4. The dorsiflexion of the foot is caused by the L5 and the foot dorsum of the foot dorsiflexion or the babinski sign is caused by the s1 including the ankle reflexes so it is in here it is asked by the dorsiflexions of the foot so the answer is l5 now 28 sorry 29 a 75 year old woman who has a carcinoma of the upper rectum undergoes anterior resection the arterial blood supply of the upper rectum arises from the wish of the following upper rectum that is supplied by inferior mesenteric artery a 65 year old man undergoing an abdominal autogram and a stenosis is demonstrated on the lateral aortic branch arising at the level of the body of the second lumbar vertebra the stenosis vessel is most likely to be the question name itself second lumbar artery 31 a 40 year old man is admitted to the surgical day case and unit for repair of the left inguinal hernia on examination he is noted to have diffuse skin tanning spotty pigmentations of the elbow nipples buttocks and pigmentation of the scar from a previous right inguinal repair three hours after the operation becomes severe hypotensive it is called Addisonian crisis or the patient has a dark pigmented skin, tanny skin. So this is increased melanoma due to increased depositions of melanoma. Three hours after the operation, patient is hypertension. What is the most likely cause? Clearly determined. The patient has adrenal insufficiency or is called Addison disease. Patient has Addison disease. Answer is B. Adrenal insufficiency. 32. A 19-year-old woman presents to the emergency department profoundly hypovolemic. Having fallen from a horse, a posterior anterior chest radiograph shows a fracture to the middle third of the cleft clavicle. Which of the following vessels most likely to be damaged? So what lies behind the middle third of the clavicle? So that is the left subclavian artery. The name itself, see the clavicle and this cleave, stuff below the clavicle, subclavian artery. The name itself denotes the answer. 33. A 65 year old man presented with an inguinoscrotal swelling in the right groin, which is non tender. A cough impulse is elicited. 
at operations and indirect inguinal hernia is repaired. The cremasteric muscle is derived from which of the following? Cremasteric is derived from the internal oblique muscle. A 70-year-old woman in the recovery area receives 28% oxygen by mask. The blood gas shows this is 7.1 acidosis. Partial carbon dioxide is higher, so respiratory acidosis. So why the patient may have a respiratory acidosis? Because his respiratory may be suppressed. Respiratory center may be suppressed. He is not breathing enough. He is, sorry, she is not, she is not breathing enough. That is why carbon dioxide is accumulating in the, accumulating in the blood. That is why the pH is falling. And reduce sensitivity of which receptor is most likely to be responsible for this blood gas, blood gas picture. This is by the central chemoreceptor. Central chemoreceptor is very much, very much sensitive to bicarbonate ion or the partial carbon dioxide level as this is not working this is not working that is why patient has respiratory acidosis the answer is c 35 a 20 year old man presents with pain on the left scrotum a diagnosis of varicocele is made which vessel it is involved varicocele the varicocele is the testicular vein is the involved you see the left gonadal vessel the left testicular vein is on the left side in the right side is directly goes to the inferior vena cava but on the left side is goes to the left renal vein and then go to the inferior vena cava this is also very important noted anything if the patient has left renal masses the patient may have a varicocele presentations due to blockage of the vena supply 36 okay number 36 a 60 year old man presents with a heavy smoker presents with a 10 day history of frank painless hematuria so frank painless hematuria is think about renal cause and urinary bladder cause okay his prostate is slightly enlarged on rectal examination he is hemoglobin is 11 Point thirteen created in eighty four. PSA is three point one. Okay, uh, what is the most likely pathological process? Okay, smoking, painless hematuria is most likely indicates the patient may have a bladder carcinoma. In here, transitional bladder carcinoma is the answer here. The PSA is three. It is supposed to be more higher to go for uh, the prostatic carcinoma and for the renal carcinoma rcc it also a dd renal cell carcinoma but in case of renal cell carcinoma their patient may have a high blood pressure uh, a renal aneurysms and a frank gro groin pain going to low end. this kind of history will be given on the examination then we will think about the renal cell carcinoma number 37 a 34 year old woman presents with an irregular mass in the right breast which is clinically radiographically and histologically malignant okay 34 year malignant very early cases that means this supposed to be have a great genetic mutations or very high family history see the next line her mother died of breast cancer at the age of 58 and grandmother died of ovarian cancer so breast have mother died of breast cancer grandmother died of ovarian cancer so uh, what gene is most likely to be involved the gene involved for both ovarian and uh, ovarian and the breast carcinoma is brca1 the answer is brca1 38 65 year old man presents with a non-tender swelling on the right hemi scrotum at operation the hydrocele sac is opened and 40 ml of fluid is drained hydrocel hydrocel sac which anatomical structure surrounds this fluid? Very easy, I guess. Tunica vaginal is, ans is the answer. So that is for now today. I hope uh, we will uh, discuss from 39 on the next video. Till then, have a nice day.